animal hoarders. Is that really even a thing? Yes, according to the American Society of Prevention of Animal Cruelty, yes, it is a real thing. And yes, as a house cleaner, you can recognize it. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, today's question comes from a house cleaner who went to bid a house. When she got to the customer's house, there were loose reptiles all over the house. In addition to that, there were loose birds in the house, exotic birds that were pooping everywhere. They were pooping on the computers and on the furniture and on the floor and in the kitchen. There's bird poo everywhere. And the birds are screaming and cackling and the snakes are slithering through the poo and it's, wow, toxic. In addition to that, they lived in the city. And the homeowners association would not allow these people to have their chickens and ducks outside. So they had their chickens and ducks inside. There were four ducks and there were several chickens, who knows how many. Chickens and ducks inside their house with exotic birds and reptiles. Yikes. So the house cleaner wants to know what on earth am I supposed to do and how am I supposed to clean this house? Okay, you don't. You don't for this reason. When you go into a house that has this much bird poo all over the house, and I'm talking birds, ducks, chickens, whatever it is that's running around, picking, pecking, and pooing, you now have a toxic environment because you're dealing with feces and vomit and fleas and ticks and all kinds of stuff that have been brought in from outside that are now feeding on that. And then you have snakes that are slithering through it and spreading it throughout the house. So as gross a situation that is, yes, it is an animal hoarding situation. All right, so what is animal hoarding? All right, animal hoarding is when you go to someone's house and you ask them, how many animals do you have? And they cannot give you an honest answer. They don't know. The animals keep breeding. Like you've heard of the cat lady or the dog lady. Their animals keep breeding and they don't really know how many animals they have. The next thing to look for is what is the condition that the animals are in? Are they healthy animals or are these emaciated animals that are hungry and they're suffering? Because if they're not getting the proper care and the proper food, they're going to be starving and they're going to be hungry and that's animal cruelty. All right, the next thing that you need to ask and find out is are all of their shots current? Have these animals been vaccinated? Have they been neutered? Have they been spayed? Have they had shampoo that removes fleas and ticks and stuff like that that they pick up from outside? Have they been dewormed? if they're dogs or cats? If they can't answer those questions, chances are there's an animal hoarding problem that needs some intervention. All right, the next thing that you need to look at is are there children and people that live inside this home? Because if there are, chances are if they're living in an environment with all this poo and toxicity, there's probably some other stuff going on where the people in the house have allergies. It could be respiratory problems. It could be a whole host of things that are occurring as a side effect from having all these extra animals inside the house. And so in addition to checking on the people that live in the house, you have to figure out where's the money coming from that's feeding these animals. Is there enough food to go around? Are the people that live at the house, are they getting enough food? Because believe it or not, animals are expensive to feed. And although it seems like they're very tiny and very small and cute when we find them and when we rescue them, after a while they get to be bigger and they demand more food in order to survive. You bring in a little tiny dog and the next thing you know, he's 75 pounds. Okay, they demand a lot of food. And if they're not getting proper food and they're not getting proper care and they're not getting proper veterinary care, then there's a problem and it brings on animal hoarders. You can call your local law enforcement officer. They have a whole entire department that's in charge of the humane area of animals and animal cruelty. They can send somebody out to check on the property. You can also call social services. If the social services come out, they will check on the people that live in the house and make sure that the living conditions for the people are up to par. And they will also check on the animals. And if the animals need to be removed from the house, they will make that decision as well. There are people from the social services that have been trained to recognize certain elements that as a house cleaner, maybe you don't recognize. Get someone else involved. All right, now another thing that you need to look at is a lot of animal hoarders, they think they are rescuing these animals. They think they are doing a service to the animals and that they can take better care of them than anyone else. And they see animal shelters 
as an enemy. Like, oh, if you take my animal, they're going to kill my animal. And then I'll never see it again. And they become attached to these animals. But the reality is the animal shelters are trained to take care of rescue animals and can help find adoptive families for some of these pets that will give them better care than a person who is neglecting these animals and neglecting themselves. And another thing that we need to think about when we think about animal hoarders is the reason why someone is an animal hoarder. A lot of times it's because there's a social situation that's gone on where maybe there was a traumatic situation and in order to provide love that was missing in the person's life, they took on all these little animals. And as they've taken on more and more animals, they push themselves further and further away from society. So now the people and the animals are socially inept and they are not well adjusted in the social circumstances and society that we live in. And so as a result, we need to check in on those people on a regular basis just to make sure that the people themselves are okay and then make sure that the animals are okay. So in the spirit of giving and caring, we need to look out for the people that are animal hoarders. It's a very, very sensitive subject and it ranges in all ethnicities and all ages and all socioeconomic levels. And it is something that is a huge concern. So if you are a house cleaner and you go into someone's house and you see that all this is going on, and this is a situation where it's harming the animals that live there and it's harming the people that live there just for the sheer fact that there's all this toxic poop and stuff in the house. That is now a problem that should be reported. So I'm not trying to get anyone's animals taken away, but I do want to be aware and sensitive to the fact that a phone call and an intervention needs to be made. So until that intervention happens and until we remedy the situation and either get care and veterinary care and help for the animals so they can be returned to the family, it is not a good idea to go in and start cleaning that area because now you're putting your house cleaners and your team at risk. So I hope that sheds a little bit of light. I know it's a very sensitive subject and it's an awful situation to find people and animals in. But if you suspect animal hoarders, please report it and please get some help just in the name of protecting people and animals. It's, it's, it's a kindness we need to do for our fellow man. All right, so that's it for today. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.